Welcome to the show with no name for May the 31st, 2013. I'm Bob Going with Jim Nicosia and Gavin Murdoch. Well, I don't have to point to them anymore. They'll just, their names will just suddenly appear in, in front of their bodies as they're talking. Yes, yes. And then a thing over the head that says the show with no name, May 31st, 2013. Wow. Technology is great, isn't yeah. it? We can, imagine what Sister Anna Roberta could have done with this technology. Oh, oh boy. She would have had a oh. control and it had been all done. Oh, my God. We could, oh, she we would have loved that. We could stay home on our laptops with the, the what do they call it, the, the video thing on your on your computer. And, yeah. And transmit it to Bob and Bob. That's can, right. Yeah. Put it all together here. Yeah. Actually, we, we can do that. We can. Yes, we can save. Yeah. Actually, we could do this show on Skype. You guys don't even have to come over anymore. We just do three-way Skype. And, oh, but you but no, no, that you lose interaction. Yeah. You use that. You use that banter and the, the opportunity to sit yeah. down with good friends once a week. Well, that's yeah. true. That's true. And share my coffee yeah. and my orange juice or water. And how things go. Wait, 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 wait. You had to tell everybody that it's not orange <laughs> Wow. Oh, God. All right. All right. Let's, see All right, let's see. Uh, let's, let's put a plug in for tomorrow's big HAL event, the historic oh, yeah. Amsterdam League uh, West End and, story. Oh, yes, that's uh, right. That we're going to go through, well, actually our neighborhood. Uh, uh, all three of us walk, all live in the West about. End. That's I better right. sit on my porch tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think they were planning on coming by here. That wasn't listed. And, no. And I got good stories it's, about this house. So I think it's all down on the flats. Well, so. Yeah, but nobody wants to walk up the hill. That's why. Nobody. Well, no, but maybe they could take the bus up the hill. So. <laughs> well, Clyde probably wouldn't allow well, it. Right. Wouldn't be on the level then, would it? Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, this uh, this house has, I don't know, uh, there are rumors attached to the, or there are legends attached to this house. Legends is Legend. better. Yeah. And uh, my research has sort of indicated that maybe the legends aren't quite 100% uh, true. And that are completely accurate? But they're so good that they're, you know. Why, the why spoil a good story why with Why spoil a good story? <laughs> yeah. At, at any rate, it is, uh, it is true that at one time, the uh, Board of Trade, which was the predecessor of the Chamber of Commerce, the Amsterdam Board of Trade uh, had a contest to come up with a slogan for Amsterdam. And the winning slogan was, success is yours in Amsterdam. Well, I thought it was small city, big heart. No, 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 that was later. Uh, and the prizes were better in the old days. Uh, <laughs> the winner of... And that slogan was maintained by the Board of Trade and the, like uh, on the recorder's letter, uh, you know, uh, logo on the fourth page there for uh -huh. decades, decades. I think it was still there in World War II. It says, still said, sex, su success, success is yours in Amsterdam, uh, or at least close to it. Now, the winner of that contest was James Keeley McKenney. Uh, and the story is, that's Mike McKenney's grandfather, who mm -hmm. calls us regularly on the other show. Uh, and the story is that uh, in exchange for that slogan, uh -huh. he was given four building lots on George Street. Really? The street that nobody wanted to walk up. Well, right. The, the, the street that there was only a paper street at the time. Uh, and and uh, the whole development above us here, uh, Campus Heights, was uh -huh. just a paper. A paper, but the, those four lots were, you know, the four hilliest lots, uh, not the not the flat Flats. ones on yeah. Princeton and Harvard and all that, but uh, uh, but the uh, you know the the state school. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the street was named for George McFarland, who, uh, and the McFarlands owned all of Campus Heights and uh, all the area around uh -huh. here. So McFarland Street, George Street, uh, I don't know if Phillips was one of them. I don't think Phillips was one of theirs, but uh, anyway. Uh, Lily and Laura, I Lily think. Lily and Laura. Or, uh, or no, those were Mockles. Those were Mockles, never mind. Uh, anyway, George Street was named for George McFarland. And this was all part of the McFarland apple orchard at one time. They had a big farm up mm -hmm. above us here. And uh, the, the, the romantic part of the story is uh, upon winning these lots, uh, he took uh, his girlfriend, Anna McNally, up here 
To grow up in the wood yard. To the top of the hill, to, to, show, to show her the lots that he had just won. Uh -huh. like the apple trees. And, and he proposed to her on this spot. <laughs> and she said, James Kelly McKenney, I will marry you if you build me a house right here. And this is it. He was 21 years old and built this really magnificent house. It really is a great house. I uh, have, yeah. I have the books, the volumes of uh, uh, carpenters and uh, contractors books. I think there's 12 of them that shows these homes. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm yeah. not sure if this particular house. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. But these homes and what it cost to build them at the time, three thousand dollars. Oh yeah, tops. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, beautiful. You know, woodwork and everything in them. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, uh, you know, you, I don't know if you, I guess it's off camera, but the uh, the woodwork in this room is all oak. Yeah. Uh, 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 harder than hell to drill through. I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, uh, believe it. Uh, <laughs> but so are the walls. It's beautiful, beautiful. Well, all plaster walls and. Uh, uh, then somewhere along, then in the 20s, of course, there was no water, there was no uh, gas, there was no electric. Uh, and he used to carry a barrel of water on his back from, from down on Northampton Road uh, where the spring was, you know, by, uh, really where Phillips and Northampton come together. There used to be an open spring there, the White Spring. Uh -huh. And he would, every day, he would carry a barrel of water up his back up George Street. Now this guy was about five foot two, seriously. He was a very short guy. I knew him in his old age. Uh, in fact, I sat with him in the living room here one time, chatting with him before he died. He was about 92 at the time. Uh, and the two ladies next door, the, the, the Carrington sisters, they were, they were both in their 90s. Uh, and they, they had, between the two families, they had lived here for forever, forever. for 60 some years. Uh, just that, just. <laughs> <laughs> Just those, you know, in their families. Wow. Uh, Carrington or Carrigan? What was their name? Uh, they've been dead a long time. One of them was still alive when I moved here. Yeah. If you if you go with them on their on their tour tomorrow, if they look at my garage in the back, it's got sliding doors still on it, like the old. The yeah, old. yeah, 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 yeah. And in the back of the building, there's a there's a hole, maybe two by two that went through the building out to the back where they used to, I believe, they used to shovel the manure. Oh, okay, that, sure. That's, that's what I believe. That I would make sense, yeah. yeah. But uh, that was quite a bit. But you may have noticed uh, on my porch here when you come in, there's a, there's a door it's, uh, or, you know, that's you know, this high off the ground and about this big. You know what that was? No. It was no. the ice. Uh, that, no. that was, the, the ice, ice would door. be delivered directly. One of the odd things I found when I moved in here was that the refrigerator was plugged in right inside the front door, or, you know, or the, or the back door. Yeah. Uh, and I said, that's an odd place in the room to have a refrigerator. You should have the table here. And so, you know, well, the reason was that's where the ice box I, I was. The ice box. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the ice man never had to come in the house. He could just open the, that hatch yeah. and, and stick the ice into the ice box from outside. Everybody's ice box was near the back door, and there's one like that at City Hall too. If uh, uh, along the along, along the wall, the overlooking the garden, uh, j just off the driveway. Yeah, really? well, some of the some of the later homes, they had the the opening in the side of the kitchen wall where the milkman put his milk. Yeah. Okay. Open the slide, and he put his you know how many quarts of milk he wanted, and close the door, and it. And hopefully it wouldn't freeze like it. Did. Yeah, right, uh -huh. right. So it was interesting the back then. Yeah, I remember the ice box. <laughs> well, my my grandfather was an ice man. In fact, he was always getting in industries at the at the tail end of their usefulness. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. He was uh, he was an expert on horses when the automobile came hey, in. Seems that's how uh, how he met my grandmother. It's an odd thing, but uh, during World War One, we were uh, we were going through a lot of horses. Yeah, because they were still using horses in, in the, the war, war. Yeah. and it, and uh, guess what? Horses get killed just as easily as men do. In fact, easier because they're better targets. <laughs> uh, so his job was to go south, pick up a load of horses, bring them to Brooklyn, and then ship them off to Europe. 
No, I mean, it's not like he was in charge. He was just okay. one of the one of the Wranglers. Yeah. Uh, and and my my grandmother lived in Brooklyn. She was probably eighteen at the time when they met, and uh, that's how you know that's how he got to be in Brooklyn. It was sending horses to Europe to to win the war. Oh. That yeah. sounds like a million years ago, doesn't it? Well, at least a hundred. Uh, wow. Anyway, there we are. Yeah. You know, it's <clears throat> interesting, and, and reading the book, we do all the statistics mm. of all the things that were produced and made in America. I did that on purpose, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, was your, that was your hook, huh? Yeah, yeah. But you know, the, the, the best line in there is right at the end when you talked that the... Uh, the women? The, um, uh, the, the city was going to reach an economic crisis. And yeah, it was because yeah. we weren't going to have enough people right. for all the openings and all the right. factories that, that right. we had going here. Right. It's like, whoa, yeah. what a difference. Yeah. But it's just yeah. unbelievable how Actually, we, what a we, city we, was. I mean, how we, we actually faced that same problem uh, at the end of World War II before the guys came home. But Bigelow Sanford was saying, we've got, we've got 1,100 more jobs available than there are people to, to fill them. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's, when and, the women, and, that's when the women started. And nine years later, they were gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was, uh, it was a city that, that didn't sleep 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It, yeah. was, it was going. And that, before the, that was before the war. Yeah, they were just I mean, the, so the, active. The, 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 the third shift at uh, Mohawk Carpets uh, uh, had about three thousand people employed. Holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it is actually stunning to read those statistics. Uh, and of course, the nineteen oh six predictions. Uh, you know, if we if we keep doubling our population every uh, an average of once every eleven years, like we yeah. had been for the previous hundred years. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we do. What do we have? Uh, like two, uh, yeah, yeah, like seven million that. people by uh, by nineteen seventy five. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. You know, but it was a, a perfect location to have industry. You had water power. Well, still, you had you had a, a several great means of transportation. You had the canal. You had the railroad. You had a you were a man main turnpike between here and Canada. Yeah, you know. It just it, it offered so much. It still does. It's just we don't have any land. The city itself. Well, it's more. It's more than that, though. I mean, the the whole state in the and, and it's it's mostly a, an artificial crisis. Uh, the, the state of New York uh, developed laws back in the '30s that uh, that made it uh, uh, economically feasible uh, for. Uh, for our businesses to go elsewhere, <laughs> uh, almost a requirement. They'd be out of their minds if they didn't. Uh, but you know, even have we got these on? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. I always have to check the microphones at some point, so we don't have to do the show over. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 even even after Bigelow Sanford left you realize how, mu how much production there still was in this town, mm -hmm. even when it was facing a crisis. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I, the book was too long. I, I mean, it, it was too long when I finished it. It's not too long now, it's just the right way. <laughs> but I had a, you know, I, I, I start with the parade and I sort of end with the parade. Not mm -hmm. quite end, but the last, yeah. first, you know, first serious chapter is the parade and the last serious yep. chapter is the parade. Uh, and I almost had the third parade, which was the, the one on July the 5th, 1954, the sesquicentennial mm -hmm. parade. Because that was a spectacular parade I mean, and it was planned like a year in advance mm -hmm. I mean it was just and it was that was the point I think of it's all when, downhill after that when I lived on Trinity Place there was an old elm tree I think behind the house next door but if you look out our back window you, you, you see it and it was virtually dead, this tree. And then, just before it actually died, it had this sudden burst 
of fertility. And it cast out seeds over the entire neighborhood. And our yard was filled with these, I must have, we had a tiny postage stamp lot, they're half the size of yours down there, uh -huh. okay? And we had probably 20 uh, brand new elm trees in, in the yard as a result of this seeding the uh -huh. neighborhood. And then the tree died. And that's what that sesquicentennial parade was. It was the last burst. It was Amsterdam. Well, it was right. old Amsterdam at its peak. Giving up the Exploded. Gold. You know, it was like, like in the Nova. You know, like, uh, like the, the star uh, going yeah. into supernova. And, and died. Uh, and it, and and you can, I mean, you can trace it right to you know that was July of 1954, and in January of uh, 55, Big Old Sanford announced they were closing. Goodbye. Yeah. And by October, uh, they had sold uh, all their buildings at auction. Wow. I think the saddest picture in uh, that whole thousands of collections that uh, Mark Perfetti put up, uh, old recorder pictures on uh, his Smug Mug uh, website is, uh, and it, you know, there's the only caption there is the one I put there. It, it shows the loading dock at one of the big old Sanford buildings with a sign saying auction October 25th or whatever, whatever it was. And that was it. That was the selling off of Amsterdam. Uh, uh, and I suppose, you know, if you were you didn't have to be much of a prophet to see what was coming at that point, but uh, but they fought it all the way. You know, I mean, the city fathers did everything they could. You know, they well, let's do this, let's get this, let's yeah, they tried let's to try this, it. let's try yeah. that, let's get this aid, let's get that aid, and and we ended up with uh, the new Amsterdam and the new new Amsterdam, the new 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 Amsterdam, and that brings us up to our new Amsterdam bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. River Overlook. And the continue, you know, uh, it was only a few weeks ago that I read that 1946 editorial from the recorder about how downtown Amsterdam will be saved by a new hotel. Mm -hmm. And don't they run the same editorial uh, 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 about a week ago in the recorder, you know, or maybe two? Yeah, yeah Charlie's reading the same, same yeah. article. They might, they might just as well have written the same, uh, same mm -hmm. editorial. Uh, because it was the same thing, exactly the same. Well, this will revitalize, and and we're getting the the same nonsense about about this bridge that doesn't go anywhere. Well, uh, I think we fully established that uh, that our entire common council is composed of morons. Uh, uh, they they just bought the, bought into this. They bought the bridge. They bought the bridge. It's now it now belongs to the city. Now, with, with the backing of the, uh, the recorder yeah. and the mayor. And, yeah, and it's uh, always, the, rec the recorder always backs this stuff in the end. It doesn't matter how crazy it is, they always end up backing it because they always, that nobody wants to say I'm against progress. Nobody wants to say the emperor has no clothes. Oh, that's right? scary. Yeah, that's, you know, yeah. That, that's, that's the sad part about what's going on in the city is that you don't get the backing for the projects that should be done yeah. or should be investigated, right. you do not get the backing because it's a political. Yeah, it's a political thing. You know, and they keep talking about the bridge, how it's going to be c connecting the two sides, and it's going to be part of the the Riverlink Park. Yeah, but it ain't because you can't get off there. Right, well, that, yeah. you know, but that's, they might they, that's they might they might put a rope bridge. They could always add a rope bridge on the end that you could. Reverse uh, if you had to. And, and, and we're going to link with Guy Park Manor. Well, where's the money for that? Oh, well, I just have to. Uh, well, it, this is all incremental. Yeah. This is all incremental. Now, the recorder repeated in the editorial this morning the lie that the money can't be spent for anything exactly. else. You know, it, and and that's, a, that's an outright lie. Yes. That's right. Because they told me right. that that means Right. That there, there's, no, there's no question about it. Question the, the, the TV uh, station went and investigated it. Absolutely correct. There's no question that that's what the law is. The legislature could change it tomorrow exactly. and, and, and apply that money to something, something else, else related to riverfront development. Right. Now, you, you know, you know the uh, uh, respect and affection I have for our contributing editor, Robert Van Hassel. Or who is uh, also the city economic director, as well as being city historian and contributing editor of the show with no name. Correct. Uh, 
he put the most absurd argument on Facebook uh, on behalf of the city as to why uh, explaining how the maintenance or the cost of maintaining the bridge would really not cost the city anything. I, I heard that. Because, and he comes out with the figures, mm -hmm. you know, as we've previously shown you, uh, the increase in the sales tax revenue will be such and other, so that it, it, it equals out. Uh, if you assume that the cost of uh, maintaining the bridge is like $12,000 $12, a year. $12,000, give me a break. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, all right, okay, if we assume that. If we take that as gospel. If we assume that, all we have to do is assume that this new bridge or overlook, whatever you want to call it. Actually, he put bridge in quotes, so it's not to confuse it with what it really is, which is an overlook. Uh, all we have to do is assume that the new bridge will generate an additional $2 million in retail sales, uh, the, the taxable sales during the course of a given year. Yeah. That's all we have to do. $2 million. Maybe a million and a half. I didn't cut it down exactly, but it was something like that. It was over a million. Well. Well, you well, know, you well, know, you know it, it, this is what you call working backwards. We need to generate $12,000. What will it take to do that? And then we come up with that figure. Well, well what? Oh, really? Well, you're going to have 30,000 people <laughs> they, come. They, they don't generate okay. that in the city the way it is. You got 30,000 people, you're going to come because of that. Right. And if you spend 10 bucks a piece, that's $300,000. Additional, right? Okay. Assuming it's all retail taxable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's three hundred thousand, but probably with the cost or anything, it's going to be more than ten bucks a person. You know, be closer to seventy or eighty. You know, now you're up to uh, you're getting some. And, and some you're numbers. talking money that would not otherwise have been spent. This is additional right. over and above there's, what there's, otherwise. In other words, this has got to be from people coming from out of town. This right? is discretionary this is people income. In town would have been so, this is discretionary and, income. People. And where are they going to spend this? First of all. Uh, in, in, I, local, you know, I, local I asked my community. favorite bartender on the south side uh, uh, how many how many additional glasses of beer he think he was going to sell as a result of this. Uh, and the answer was, uh, I don't want to speak for him. Okay, because he's negative anyway. Oh. Uh, yeah, um, it's absurd. I mean, I mean, once you uh, you know, if you start out well, twelve thousand dollars isn't all that much. Well, first of all, if that is remotely an accurate figure, which it really isn't, but if you want to make up a budget, that's what it is. But then when you, but then to, you know, to get there, to get there, you're, you're the, half the, the, the city's percentage backwards. of what the what the uh, total counties actually he, you, he says this will generate county, city, state, and uh, uh, sales tax, and then the, then the city gets a percentage of the county. And, uh, and well, the, come on, there'll be local sales that'll be, and that's to just to break owners. even on the maintenance. But and but of course he says but that, but that doesn't even count on how much it's going to generate in riverfront development. Okay, what is going to develop? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the you know when you think about it, what's available to develop? First of all, the Canal Corp owns all the land along the river. Okay, so it's not like you're going to develop uh, townhouses between the railroad and the river on the north side. You recall uh, can come back on the south side of the river. You you you. There's a narrow patch that uh, uh, John Tessero owns, I believe, or Cranesville Block, uh, uh, that where the old Erie Canal was. Uh, but that's not really particularly developable. It, it's uh, it's swampy for one thing. You probably probably the Army Corps of Engineers wouldn't even let you use it. Uh, that leaves the Chalmers property, which is a nice piece of property along the river. Mm -hmm. Okay, with a great view of the slums on the north side of the river. Uh, but re regardless, uh, nice piece of property. That could make a nice hotel, visitor center, whatever. Well, you know what? Our economic development team has already told us that they, they want to essentially make that tax-free or, or, or in lieu of taxes uh, for 20 years into the future. So where, where does the tax revenue come from that? It doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, up front, the construction costs, you'll say, yeah, well, it's being constructed. Uh, those guys are going to be buying lunch someplace. Yeah, that's fine. You know, uh, that's cool. Uh, that's during the construction phase, which will last a year, maybe. 
there will be sales tax presumably paid on the materials, which will be paid no. somewhere else no. <laughs> because they're not going to be bought internally. Well, at least that's the way well, I think, think, think it's fair. Build local, buy local. As a matter of fact, they probably won't even be paying sales tax on that because it's a municipal project, mm -hmm. now that I think about it. Right. Mm. All right. So, so you, you know, it is absolutely absurd from beginning to end. The, the, the whole premise is uh, uh, built on this. New York Post did a nice job jabbing it a couple of years ago, but... Uh, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they had an editorial on, on, uh, on our bridge. Yeah, yeah. And uh, talk about wasted money. Uh, and and you, you can't... Anybody in their right mind... Let's get out of Amsterdam for a minute. If you live somewhere else, say you live in Hudson, New York, and you see that a, a state that is broke... Uh, that is having trouble meeting its pension obligations, uh, that, uh, uh, that has raised taxes over and over and over again, is suddenly going to spend $16.5 million to build a bridge that isn't a bridge, uh, that's an overlook, that overlooks what we already have overlooking it? <laughs> <sighs> it's a redundant view. Oh, Cause you my can't, God. You can't see it from here. And they're going to, but they're going to travel up here to look at it, so they can. Uh, you know, I don't. So, so they can. So the, the, so they can double over in laughter in the middle of it. Have they determined uh, they? the the <laughs> archaeological dig down there? Uh, how no, much no, be, that's uh, still flow. Of course, that's that's, that's being kept a big secret because it's such a. They got no trespassing signs, I believe, down there. That they should have no trespassing signs down there. Damn right, they should. This is a, 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 you know, we've mentioned this before, but this is an extremely, extremely important archaeological find they have down there. Uh, first of all, you know the whole area is going to be archaeologically interesting anyway because, because it's, it's the site of the origination of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, and the first well they will have at the end of the bridge they'll have a, a little bump out so that you can see down into the excavations of the archaeological oh, yeah? you don't see yeah. that, you don't think hmm? you don't think oh you mean they will, they will. uh yeah maybe <laughs> but they're still working on the plans but <sighs> supposedly but they've only <clears throat> they've, real, the they've literally only scratched the surface of the archaeological stuff. But what they've found is is evidence of a human occupation that's older than the pyramids of Egypt. Okay, now obviously not as large, not as large or as long lasting as, as the pyramids. Uh, although I, I assume our new bridge will, will will last as long as the pyramids. <laughs> or, or until somebody determines that uh, the river need, the river uh, w needs to be able to accommodate ocean-going vessels, and therefore we're going to have to tear it down. I can see that coming. Well, it's only a 50-year bridge anyway. Right. Oh my God. Fifty years together, we haven't. They got to do more work on it. So. Anybody vote no? I guess Divis voted no, didn't he on that? Yes, he did voted no. Okay. And the budget? Did anybody vote no on the budget? That story wasn't it really so. in yet. I don't think so. And don't forget, we have to remind the viewers that next Tuesday or this coming Tuesday yeah. is the uh, vote. Well, we got to yes, that's my next issue. That's right, and I'm uh, gotten to. Uh, I guess I. Do you get any big arguments out on the street? Oh, I, I got like into it. an argument on <laughs> Facebook yesterday oh. with my Gina. Uh, oh my God! It was basically uh, uh, don't vote no because you uh, you people are ignorant. Uh, 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 learn the facts from smart people like me uh, who know what we're talking about. Gina said that huh? essentially. Did she uh, was she able to look into the future and tell us how the vote was going to go? Uh, she probably already knows. Yes, she probably felt that little scratch on her neck. <laughs> She right. missed the lottery numbers all a couple weeks ago. Yeah, well, and that never works. <laughs> wow. I forgot what was the what was the, the Martin Martin <laughs> Martin uh, Martin Luther. No, 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 just Martin. Hit her on the other side of the head. 
<laughs> Tickled her neck. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, there are there is so, uh, there's so much wrong uh, at, at so many levels. First of all, let's let's ignore uh, the issue of whether the people should be deciding uh, who their uh, officials should be or not. That's that's number one. But we'll, we'll, let's get past that. They're creating a position that they claim will be a six-year position, a position for a term, okay? An appointed position for the term, appointed by the mayor, which means it will last past the mayor's term of office. That means the next guy's next mayor has got, uh -huh. this, the next mayor will have that person there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, although actually, which is against the, uh, no, 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 actually the six-year term yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it will uh, the the first time if it's appointed for six years, it will get past the next mayoral term and then end at the end of the next mayoral term. But then it's another six years, so it does the same thing right. again. So occasionally it will line up with the mayor, so uh, with the incoming mayor. And one of the things, well, we set uh, criteria for the, for the job, you know, the yeah. qualifications, blah 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 blah. All of which means nothing if you're appointing a, if it's a non-elected position, the civil service department, the civil service board so, has to make the determinations as to what the qualifications are for the office. Correct. They have to make the determination as to how it's classified. Okay? Uh, and you may, the argument may very well be that the, uh, as they made the argument for the police chief and the fire chief, that it becomes a classified civil service position, in which case it will not be for a term despite what the charter says. It will be for? Because, because the charter says the police chief and the fire chief so serve coterminously with the mayor. Boom. Right? At the end of the mayor's term, uh, they're done, they have to be reappointed. Right? Uh, but the state attorney general has issued an opinion saying because now the, uh, now the civil service department changed those from an exempt position to a classified position, that therefore uh, you throw, you throw that, uh, the term out and they serve uh, until they, they die or retire or, or are removed from office for cause, which is, which is a very difficult thing to do. So kind of like, kind of like getting fired from now the IRS. You get a, now you get a lousy controller in there, and Lord knows uh, that's easy enough to do. And there's no way out, essentially. You got them. And there it is. Now, did they think about this? No, B, they don't even know about this stuff, okay? They don't even know about this stuff. They think we can do whatever we want. We're the common council. We're the mayor, you know? Uh, well, the mayor, mayor has that opinion that she can do what she wants. Well, yes, she and does, she, and she and does. She, and she's getting away with it because she has a, uh, uh, a corporation council that's in her pocket. And uh, a council, or vice versa. And, and a council who, who knows nothing about the operations of, of the city. And you're, go and you're going to, well, that's right, I agree with you 100%. But uh, now, now you're going, well, where was I going with this? Uh, you're going to have the controller appointed by the mayor, just as the corporation council is. Who's the controller going to be now be loyal to? If the, if the, mayor, if the mayor wants to uh, fudge the, the books as the controllers have done in the past, yep. who's going to say no? I serve at the, uh, and uh, now somebody said that, that it says in there that they serve at the pleasure of the mayor, which is nonsense because that's determined by the civil service department, not by the mayor. They, they have had they have had elected controllers in office who were afraid of the mayor yeah. and, and other officials, and they would do exactly what the mayor right. wanted. Right. They, they, they were not independent people. They were in there so long that they, that they, uh, they were taking the orders from... They were hiding money. Well, absolutely. They were hiding money all over the place. All over the place. Uh, uh, the perfect example is... Uh, some years ago, I think you were there, uh, or, it, or if not, it was around your time. I was there. Uh, they uh, uh, routinely, the city borrows money in anticipation of the state money coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, every year we get X hundreds of thousands of dollars in chips money to repair the streets. Okay. 
and, and so we say we borrow, I think what we did that year, it was what, 400000 something like that. Something like that. We borrow $400,000 in anticipation of the CHIPS money. Okay? The CHIPS money comes in, we don't pay it back. We don't pay off the four hundred thousand. We just use that four hundred thousand as an asset to balance the budget. It was, it was hidden in the in the water fund, or, or the. I think. It, well, there was that. Uh, there's yeah, that it too. Was, it, was, it was hidden in one of the other funds. Somebody questioned, "What is this money doing here?" Oh, that's the chips money. We put it in there to hide it. To hide it. Yeah, and and who you know, uh -huh. so. If that, I mean, if that can be done now when there's some system of checks and balances, can you imagine what it would be, would be like? I mean, well, it's they, they, ignore, they ignore the law as it is. It's happening right now with this council and this yes. mayor. They're borrow, borrowing money to do projects. Right. They're doing the projects. They're borrowing, you know, $50 million or, or not $50 million. $500,000 or, or $1 million more than what the project is going to take. Mm -hmm. They're getting the money, they're doing the project, the additional $50,000 or $100,000, where is it? Gets added to the budget. We got more money to spend. That's their fund balance. That's how they come up with a fund balance. And it's been proven, the, the, the Katie Ross Crick... Uh, yeah, it's Katie, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the Crick project up there? The Bundy Street? Dove Creek, Dove Creek. Dove, Dove Creek. Uh, yeah. They, they, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it was $75,000. They just took the money right out of there. Yep. And used it. They used it in Riverlink Park, yep. right? Yep. It, to to yep. buy docks in the in that building. Isn't that all, isn't all this going to come home to roost one of these days when they get it straightened out? Sooner or later, the state's going to say, "What the hell are you doing?" Except they don't do audits anymore. Well, by the way, have they done oh. that audit that they said they were going to do? Yeah, they said the, every, they're doing everything properly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, I mean, all they're doing is saying, "Well, yeah, you're putting money here, you're putting your money here, you're, uh, you know, uh, you're putting it in the right places." They're not saying how much of the money is. Uh, right, 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 right. They're not saying that you're spending right. the wrong. You know, well, but they're that. saying they're saying uh, you, you have a voucher for this and you have a debit over here. Yeah, right. Yeah, you get, your, okay. your procedure is okay because uh, yeah, uh -huh, that's the way you're uh -huh. supposed to do books. Yeah. However, you know, when you overspend your uh, uh, overtime budget and you just keep on going. And don't balance the books at the end of the year. Something's wrong. You know what I can't understand uh, when when I, the last my last term is the overtime budget for public safety was something like three hundred thousand dollars or, or some ridiculous Whatever. figure. The following year, they cut out the overtime budget. Where's the money coming from? You just take it. I mean, they ignore it. You, you can't. You the, can't. The, the problem is the controller's office for years now has been completely ignoring the budget. You know, as as bad as the county is run, nothing gets spent without there being something in the line item. Period. That's it. You can't spend it. But sorry, we can't write this check. There's nothing there. I have no authorization. And but but when but when you have the power to just write the check uh, and nobody says anything about it. Ron Ron stopped it. Ron stopped it when they they were trying to pass uh, resolutions at the council meetings to spend money. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. He says. Wait a minute, Mayor. He says. Uh, There's no money in that line. I, and they were. What do we do now? Well, Does it the next, next meeting, they, they, Jerry would figure out that they would take money from different places. Well, that's fine. Uh, you know, as long as they do it the right way. Well, they weren't doing it the right way. But, but no, I know. I, I know they weren't. I know that. I mean, it happened when I was there. Uh, it, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it, and I said, you can't do this. And then, who, who am I? I'm just the attorney, right? They just do what they want to do. And the other thing, of course, about the... Uh, uh, you can't have an unrestricted fund balance in a city. There's no law allowing for that, and yet, the, yet they, the, they do it. And you guys tried to do it right by, uh, by saying, okay, the, the, we have, say we have $2 million in fund balance, it's going to be divided up this way. This one is to, you know, to keep taxes in balance. This is for capital expenses. This I, is uh, All that stuff, and they uh, ignore it. I went to City Hall, and I questioned that. And I said, Where, is, where are these fund balances that we put this money away? And show me the, res the, the question. The answer was, show me the resolution where you... Right. Or you authorize these. Right. 
I said, well, you've got to check with the, the city clerk. He said, well, we have, and we can't find any resolution, so those things don't make any difference. <laughs> really? That's the answer I got. Yeah, so, so, so now you have fund balance and nobody knows what it is and whether it's real or whether it's, whether it's fake. Because there's a, there's a certain amount of fund, because of the accrual system, which is okay. I mean, you know, the cruel system is a legitimate means of accounting, but it has to bear some resemblance to reality. For, uh, I mean, I had a former controller tell me that the, the controller didn't like uh, the idea of uh, foreclosures, tax foreclosures. Do you know why? Because the fund balance would go down dramatically yes, uh, because it, it, ex it exposed the phoniness of the fund balance. In other words, uh, uh, say property tax owners owe, owe $2 million in back taxes, right? Unpaid taxes in the city, that goes in the, as a $2 million asset. Right. But, but if you never collect it, it ain't much of an asset. And, and if you foreclose on it and you only get 200000 in the foreclosure sale, then all of a sudden your fund balance just dropped 1800000 They so all I, went I to the that. same Obama School of Economics. That's I, right. I, I think I read it in a paper a day or two ago that they, they passed the budget because they lowered the, uh, the increases to 3.6%. <laughs> <laughs> the six percent that was raised in that yeah, right. we bitched about it. Yeah. Well, they lowered to three point six. They said uh, I think they said three point six, and so they're each uh, below the three three point six or whatever. Uh, I says now they did this at a at a sit down meeting the day they passed the budget. So all they did was 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 juggle it and make up figures. Well, I'm sure Jerry was there on his, on his it's very, top saying, well, let's take this, let's do this. It, it is fantastically easy to uh, to balance a proposed budget. All you have to do is say, I anticipate that we're going to get that was, another $100 million in revenues. All right, we're good. But exactly the way our contributing editor came up with the, uh, the, the money to pay for the maintenance of the bridge. That doesn't, it's not a bridge. It's not a bridge. Overlook. It's an overlook. With bushes. It's a park. With bushes. I wonder if the bushes are going to block the view. Has anybody figured that out? It's a park in the, on the river. Okay. You know, actually, if they put the bushes on the side facing the new bridge, or the current bridge, uh, it might improve yeah, the view. You have to look to the west and look, you can see yeah. you know, Guy Park Manor. Well, you can't actually see Guy Park Manor, but you can see the, 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 the dam. Well, the dam. You can see the lock dam. The, the dam uh, lock. The liability so lovely, of the right. city with this new bridge is going to be just like the old bridge that's there now. The contractor screwed up when he put the pipes and the electrical wires in. With the giving of the bridge, expansion and the contraction of the bridge, the wires broke. That's why they don't have all the lights on the bridge. The, uh, they get out of here. No, that's what that, that's what the that's what the contractors that's what the maintenance people said. And it was the same thing when that water pipe broke under the bridge. Yeah, a couple of times. It wasn't, uh, the pipes weren't in there properly that the joints the right. were breaking. So, but, that won't be but the city, it was the city's responsibility on the bridge. Of we, course, because it's the city's water it. pipe, yeah. We had, to, we had to fix it, even sure. though it was the contractor's fault that he... On a weekend, as I recall. Yeah. <laughs> so Overtime? That, 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 oh, lots of overtime. Well, that's about so time. that'll be the same thing that'll happen on this thing after after your two years or whatever it is the warranty goes away, whatever happens. Very well, interesting. And whoever follows up on that stuff. Uh, how are we doing time wise here? Uh, yeah, Fifteen minutes. minutes. Well, when did we do? We started early, we didn't we? Oh, okay. Five. Yeah. Five. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> And it, it, the problem is, by the time the eminently for, uh, foreseeable uh, consequences come about, uh, everybody who was responsible for it is It'll gone. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. And you. Yeah. Live with and what you know, the, the thing is that uh, you know they pass resolutions, they they uh, they approve uh, contracts, and everything. Who who monitors? The laws that we just passed, or, or the contracts we just passed, 
who monitors it? Nobody knows. Now there's contracts that and uh, things that we passed eight years ago. All right. Who who knows what's going on? There's nobody there. There's no checks no. or balances of but uh, what's All going right. on. Uh, you know, so we we may have done something perfect six years ago, eight years ago, but nobody's there to check to make sure it got done so it doesn't get done right. Uh, it's frustrating. It is. it is. And this is just at the local level. Right. This yeah. is just this is just a, a and, yeah, tip of the iceberg. Yeah, and we're not professionals at it. We're not yeah, professionals. Right. Yeah. We're not professional so courts. Imagine what how what, what bunch of shysters it could be if you were a professional. Oh man. Hey, did you go to uh Tonko's uh did I go to Taco? No. I, you know, I was just discussing this with the wife. What is the point? Do you think anything I'm going to say to him is going to change his opinion on anything? The guy's a, you know, he had far left lunatic when it comes to the, to that stuff. Is it going to change anything? They, well, <laughs> they had rows and rows and rows of chairs set up. Yeah. For the crowd yeah. that was going to show up. Yeah. Fifteen people. <laughs> Most of them well, were reporters. So, yeah. so he, he put the chairs in a circle and he sat in the middle. <laughs> Which is, you know, oh, nice. Oh, God. God. But that's just symptomatic. Uh, anytime you'd have something like that, you're only going to get a well, literal and, handful of people. Yeah. Well, yes, but it's all, but, uh, you know, well, uh, you know, knowing it's a waste of time, the only people who are going to show up are the people who have got their hands out for yeah. something. Uh, you know. Uh, and he doesn't have the clout to get things done anyway. Mm. If he had, uh, yeah, if yeah. he had the clout to get things done, Amsterdam would be progressing a lot. We wouldn't be progressing. We would be uh, no. deeper into socialism. But who, who was was it also the post that said uh, if you want to uh, if, if you want to see a depressing lesson in forty years of uh, socialism, go visit Amsterdam. Remember that editorial? Yeah, wasn't that a few years ago? And it was absolutely right. You know, uh, you go back. Uh, there's a scrapbook at the. Uh, in a box at the Walter Elwood Museum that I came across a few weeks ago about the early days of urban renewal. Oh. And it it is both heartbreaking and yeah. uh, uh, and the absurdity of, of it all that it was so obvious to so many people at the time, all, all the negative people at the time could see, you know, how absurd this the whole plan was. And we just poured millions and millions and every but the way they set it up very, very well because uh, the influential people in the community, uh, the, whose opinions they needed, all got something out of it. That's right. Okay. The, the, all the downtown banks got uh, got a piece of the action. They all got they all got the, the building next door to them torn down, or they got a brand new building, uh, and they all got their drive-throughs and, and all that. I think I mentioned that the other day. I heard the uh, the recorder gets a brand new building. Uh, the uh, uh, you name it. They uh, and uh, all the uh, all the current stores that cooperated uh, got all kinds of moving money and everything else. They uh, I heard the uh, part of the uh, a program the other day about the, the downtown, mm. and the guy was praising. A couple people that were on the urban renewal that he got this done. He, I says, my God! I says they're praising this guy. He was probably I don't want to get sued. <laughs> I think he might be dead. He was probably one of the biggest <clears throat> carpetbaggers. Uh, I didn't want to say crooks, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, benef he benefited. Here is what you're saying. Oh, he benefited tremendously. Tremendously, yeah. and and everybody who went into that mall, I I'm not positive about the time, but they all had a 20, 25 year low rent contract Certainly, yeah. to benefit. When, but when when the 25 years was up, they all disappeared. All right, all right. Everybody in that mall disappeared. Who, who was the, the, the some of them didn't even, Some of them didn't even make it 25 years. They're no, 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 no. None of them did. They're actually, out about uh, five years. Now, a um, well, couple of them that were out in five years were not signers of it. Now, Charlie Westfall. Remember Charlie Westfall uh, and Westfall's father. Charlie was. Uh, 
Yeah, he was a World War One flyer, so he was he was up there in age. But uh, Charlie was the president of the Downtown Amsterdam Association, uh, which at the time that I joined it consisted of uh, him, uh, Mickey Miller, and a, and a couple other malcontents. So I felt the perfect organization to join. Uh, uh, they had originally come up with their own plan for Downtown Amsterdam, using using the federal money to rehabilitate the existing storefronts mm -hmm. and put up like a. a uh, you know, second floor walkways, and uh, uh, it, it, it was really nice and a hell of a lot cheaper than what was ultimately spent, and the, and it would have kept all the businesses where they were. Everybody was there. It would have would have kept them in business through the process. As it turned out, I mean, part of the destruction of downtown was was the long delay between the tearing down and the building up, which was which was years actually. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So he sat down with me one day, and uh, I think he picked as an example Holzheimer and Schals, which was going to uh, have the new store in the mall, right? It was yes, going to be one of the anchor stores mm -hmm. in the mall. And he showed the figures to me. He said, Holzheimer and Schals is going to have to double their current sales to break even on this move. He says, that's crazy. He says, there's only so much money to be spent in a community. There's only, you know, we're not, we're not going to be drawing from Schenectady. We're not going to be uh, drawing from anywhere else other than our local community. And then he pointed out, you know, they were putting in the Grand Union. Uh, and, and he explains to me, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how, you, how much your income grows, up in the, uh, grows in a community. You're only going to sell so many groceries. So putting this grand union in is only going to take business away from the yeah, market yeah. and the existing other existing supermarkets yeah, and local you know, neighborhood stores. Flatten out. Yep. Uh, and of course, ultimately, the grand union goes under after they brought Lou's market under. Yeah. And Lou wanted to move in there. He wanted to move his store to the oh. mall and maintain his downtown mm -hmm. uh, East End connection. Right? No, we don't. No, no. We we want. We want big chain coming in, not not the biggest private guy in the country. You know. uh, at the time, you know, back in the mid '60s, Lou's market uh, for total floor space was the second largest, I think, in the world, let alone the country. Albany Public Market in Albany was the, was the first. Really? Uh, for floor space. Uh, you remember how huge yeah. Lou's Market was at yeah. the time? Now oh, we yeah. Have, now we have these super, super duper markets that compete. But at the time, that's how big Lou's Market was. And now, can we bring him into the mall? No, no, no. He's not one of us. You know, he's and, not. He had, and he had another business in the basement. Well, that's right. That's right. If you if you add his storage space, uh, because he he was uh, storing for other people as well as himself. Well, he had a cheese, it, it was larger than Albany Public Market. He had a cheese business. He that's was, right. He was grading cheeses for, right, for right. The, the canner or the right. the big companies. Right. Right. And yeah. plus, he was renting out storage space uh, for uh, yeah. you know refrigerated space or whatever. Uh, he was warehousing other people's food, uh, I believe. I could be making this all up, but this is a long time ago. But, but there you go. Uh, everything, everything that could be done wrong was done wrong. But everybody who was an opinion maker got a piece of the got action. a piece of the action, and the right people were hired to uh, be working for Urban Renewal, and da 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 da, and you, you know, and, yeah. you know, and, and my sister worked there one summer. Uh, <laughs> uh, but. And the Amsterdam Housing Authority was, was doing, doing their thing and taking over, <sighs> building the projects. Who you knew? Who you knew? Henry, uh, Henry, remember Henry Morgan, the uh, comedian who was on a lot of those talk sh game shows? Harry, uh, Harry Morgan. Uh, huh? Henry. Not Harry. Not Harry Morgan. Henry Morgan. Henry. Uh, Henry Morgan was like on "I've Got a Secret" and stuff yeah. like that. Very. Uh, deadpan, uh, kind of like a George Goebel kind mm -hmm. of humor. Uh, very funny guy. Yeah. He used to, he used to uh, fill in on the late night talk shows in New York City from time to time when somebody was taking a day off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember him setting the ground rules one night. He says, uh, 
He says, uh, don't ask me about police brutality. I'm all for it. Uh, 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 you want to know about the weather? Open the window, stick out your hand. If it comes in wet, it's raining. He says, don't ask me what I think about urban renewal. I'll tell you right now. They're tearing down whole neighborhoods to build the slums of tomorrow. <laughs> pretty Was he wrong? Good observation. Was he wrong? Very good observation. Now, you know, it's, it's not well remembered at this time because it's been gone so long, but that section of Division Street where they built the projects was a pretty nice section of town. Uh, and they, they put the... They, they deliberately created a ghetto, okay? When I say, I'm using ghetto in the, in, in the literal sense that, that, that they're creating a distinct uh, wholly encompassing neighborhood or, of itself, completely de detached from everything yeah. around it. Okay? My th the feeling as a frustrated architect and engineer is if you're going to build public housing at all, which I wouldn't, but if you are, it should blend into the neighborhood around it. it, it there should be no real distinction between this block and the block next to right. it. Except in the process of building the projects, it deteriorated the rest of the neighborhood. Everything around it is it went to hell. Uh, you know, it's all it's all Chinese owned, and they're trying to get rid of it at this point. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you, you you tore down Cedar Street so that the colored neighborhood would no longer exist. You know, we we need to get rid of Cedar Street. You know, I'm using the terms of the time, folks. I'm not. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and when and when you look at that that concept, you see that when you give somebody something, what you're giving them is not theirs, and therefore right. they do not treat it as right. theirs, right? Because it's they've got no vested interest in it, other than the fact that they're there, and you can just see how little care is given. If you own something, you want to keep it good, you want to keep it fresh, you want to have it, you want to be proud of it. But if it's just handed to you, you've got no best interest in uh, keeping uh, it as you receive it. Right. Unless it's yours. Unless it's yours, but it's not theirs. But it's not theirs. I'm just existing here, and, I'm not and part of it. I'm not living here, I'm existing here. That's right, and and you know what? I'm, I am all in, for, all in favor of Long-time tenants of those places being handed the deed to the property, uh, you know, for a dollar, for a hundred dollars, or maybe a thousand dollars over ten years or something like that. Let them own it. Let them pay maintenance costs instead Let them be of responsible rent. for it. And now it's now it's theirs. Now they have a, now they have an interest in making their property look a little bit different from the guy next door. You, I lived, when I was growing up in the 50s, I lived in a neighborhood, uh, one of those brand new post-war neighborhoods uh, outside of Albany in Westmere. Uh, we lived in an older section. We had an, uh, our house dated from the 20s, but everything else, you know, a couple blocks away from us was all built post-war. Uh, like Levittown. Uh, they were essentially Levittowns. And you would have blocks and blocks and blocks of identical box houses, Cape Cods, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? Or Cape Cods or ranches, that was it. They're all the same. And then, and then a few years later, across the other side of Route 20, they were building the raised ranches, which were also all identical, but they but were also $5,000 more than the ones on the other side of the street. They were, you were moving up if you went yep. to the raised ranch. Moving on up. Well, as I say, every house looked exactly the same. You go back there today, You'd never know that they were. They all started out as the same, same house, house. <laughs> because yeah, people, people put, put on additions. They put on the uh, uh, gables the and yeah. the, the yeah, uh, garages. Because and it's theirs. Because it's they theirs. Owned it. They owned it. Yep. Yep. You know, you, you get your finished it. basements and your uh, the, the landscaping is all different, and you know that's what happens. Unless you've got some sweat equity yep. into something, the care about it. Does not exist. It doesn't exist. You know, and I, I think I mentioned this last week uh, about about Russia. You know, those those apartments, those people own the apartments inside. 
the outside looks terrible because that's the government run part and who cares about that but the part you care about is the apartment that you live that you in live, right. and how well right. you take care of it the great upkeep you can right. have into it because it's yours right. you possess it yourself you know just like when you grow up as a kid if mom and dad keep throwing you bucks you never learn the value of a dollar if you have to go out and earn it and spend time to get it you become more appreciative of what you have and when we create a system in which nobody has a vested interest in something, the system yeah. isn't going to last. A, a system where everybody gets a free cell phone, you know? It, yeah. It's all free. It's all free. It ain't free. 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 It's, it's all only, free. Well, uh. even the people who get it free aren't getting it free because now they have an obligation to the person to whom they That's right. got it for free who didn't get it for free because he took it from somebody else and the money from somebody else uh, to give it to you. And now, uh, and, and now the inevitable uh, Obamacare regulations are coming up uh, when they realize they can't pay for this, uh, that all of a sudden, uh, you know, you're going to be, you're paying extra if, if, if you're a smoker, you're going to be extra if your cholesterol is high, you're going to be paying extra if you're uh, what Michelle Obama would consider obese. Uh, and uh, and there you go. What an absurdity! They were talking about California is one of the, is on the leading edge of this and the things that are taking place there because they're at the forefront. And the people who actually have insurance that they're paying for are being restricted right. because doctors aren't taking this. Hospitals right. are not taking right. the new uh, uh, right. the policies that are from the exchanges. Right. And it's going to be more and more difficult. For people who have the government insurance to find somebody's going to take care. Of. There was uh, in Maine, there was a, a doctor stopped taking insurance altogether. He said that he says what it costs. It's like forty percent of his office cost is is complying with insurance regulations. Mm -hmm. He said, "How with it? Cash only." Yeah. And we'll, we'll be in the business of taking care of people. Of, right. you, know, Carl, you won't have to charge as much. Carl Strzok said some years ago, and, and not really in jest, he, he said, you want to control health care costs, get rid of insurance. He says, he says, no doctor in their right mind is going to charge you uh, $6,000 for this procedure or that procedure because they're never going to. You know, no. you know. But they have to spend four thousand dollars right. to, to, to just manage to do the paperwork. Else. Just That's to right. manage the paperwork. Yeah, I uh, about once a month or once every couple of months I get the, the papers from uh, the insurance carriers on and, and what the doctor charges, mm -hmm. what they allow, yeah. what is discounted, All right. and, and how much you might have to pay. Yeah, I says, the doctor might charge $130 for something. Over here, it's, it's discounted by $100, yeah. and over here it says the insurance will only pay $5. And you owe twenty five. Well, it, it's well, no, because they agreed to the accept what the insurance. Agree, it, yeah. So you know, I, I have to pay the copay, which is only a couple. But the bucks. poor doctor. I says, how can this be? How can this doctor survive? If that's the actual cost. And on top of that, these damn lawyers, uh, <laughs> you know, with with the medical malpractice uh, cases. Uh, the, the medical malpractice insurance for, for doctors in New York is in six figures. Now, that's absurd. When you watch an ad on TV wow. from a law firm that says, if you've ever, yeah. you know, if you've ever had, had any water in your life and you've been breathing the air, you may be entitled to right. compensation. I'm right. like, right. that's crazy. It is crazy stuff. And, you know, if you, if you, if you put limits on, and, of course, there, people don't understand that, their tort liability is unlimited. It's whatever you feel, what whatever a jury, jury feels right. like. And ever. the yeah. jury says, hey, it's free money, let's give yeah, it to right. them. Yeah. Right, hey, right. Uh, the lawyer, he's going to pay it, so. I, I, the doctor's got to make a lot of money, so, you know, let him pay. Yeah, and who gets hit? We do, because yeah, we have to come up with all this money. Uh, I don't know a doctor who isn't thinking of retiring, seriously. Yeah. You know, Dr. Konezny? Dr. Diamond, yeah. they're they're on the edge. They said they've yeah. had yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, Kurt, uh, Dr. Kinesi, uh, you know, was our pediatrician for our kids, and a, and a great one, I might add. Uh, he doesn't take any nonsense. No. Uh, and nor should he. But I, I, I really admire a guy who doesn't take any nonsense. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, I forget 
which an insurance company was. I kind of think it was MVP, but I'm not positive. It doesn't matter. Uh, he just got fed up with their regulations, and he announced, I'm not taking it anymore. You know, and it was a major local yeah. one. Uh, and uh -huh. uh, so we had, to, we had to switch our providers the next, uh, next time around, but it was worth it uh, to keep him. But, yeah, I mean, it, it just comes a point that where they're not, they're not going to take it anymore. Cripes, they don't sleep as it is, and then they, they got to spend half their time uh, uh, dealing with the bureaucracy. Dealing with the bureaucracy and testifying in court. You know, it's, it's, all I want to do is cure people, you know? It's, yeah. uh, he, uh, I had the, the doctor as well. He says, you know, he says, I just had a, a patient. She won't bring her kid to my house anymore, to my, to my practice. So what happened? Well, this happened. The kid, you know, he had a fever. He did this. That, and she wanted to give him aspirin or something. He said, no. He says, wait till tomorrow. See what happens by tomorrow. Then give me a call. She says, I wouldn't have him treat a dog. Because he wouldn't give the kid the medication All right. unless he needed it. And right. she wanted that medication. He says, I'm sorry. He says, I'm not going to do it. So, you know, and it, it's... Yeah, they all know better than the doctor. Yeah, they all know better than yeah. Uh, hey, I'll get a second opinion. I'll, I'll go to a doctor to tell me I can write a prescription and get get this medicine so I can spend. And go go to Doctor Feelgood. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but you know, we we've had Kinesi for all our kids, and uh, he's of the opinion, you know, there's a point if it's not that bad, take nothing because until exactly. if you can, the more you take, the more the less effective it becomes when you have to take it. Right. You need to build a resistance. And honest, I think Misha's been sick twice in 13 years. Yeah. He's a great doctor. He is, and, it just, it, and what he says is makes sense and it's logical. I say, yeah. How do you know? Otherwise, we'd never live to get to this point in history. Anyhow, if we were relying on all this stuff. Some years ago, the uh, the local Bolsheviks decided they wanted to. Uh, uh, if, they, if our water wasn't tasting bad enough to begin with, they decided <laughs> they wanted to put fluoride in yeah. the water. You know, at a time when when they were taking fluoride out of uh, most of the systems that already had it, and and. Kurt goes to the Common Council meeting. The Common Council, of course, was where they vote I, 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 I. I Kurt I, I, goes I, to the Common I, Council meeting and he, he says, uh, you know, Alderman so-and-so, uh, do you happen to know what the recommended uh, dosage of fluoride is uh, for an eight, uh, 40, uh, you know, 47 pound uh, six-year-old? Uh, do, do you know what the uh, recommended dosage for that is? Uh, no. And they said, well, it's, you know, 0 0.02 whatever it was. Whatever it was. Yeah. Whatever it was. And do you know what it is for a 10-year-old? It was all completely different. And do you know uh, how much fluoride they're recommending putting in the water? Uh, you know, and, uh, uh, do you realize that this child should be receiving that much and this child should be receiving that much? An adult that doesn't benefit at all and shouldn't be receiving any of it? And blah, blah, blah. Do, you, do you understand all these things? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, but these are the people who are against science, right? We should yeah. be. We, and, and come to find out that the, there, there's fluoride in the food you eat, and, uh, and well, there uh, yeah. and, and the beverages, so you don't need any additional. When uh, when Anna was born, we were still living in Albany, where they had fluoridated water, and uh, Anna ended up with striped teeth. I was going to say it uh, affected their teeth. Yeah, yeah, because because uh, because of the fluoride in the water. Yeah. Her, her front teeth had stripes. We had to have them treated later on. Stripes going this way or stripes going up and down? Um, horizontal, I believe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Bands. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Brown. Yeah. 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 Ten after. They were safe. Her teeth were safe, but they were. They look like hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so. What about those? That may do it for the show. I mean, I, I'm, I'm about uh, talked out here. All right. You have That's more things you want to talk no. about on this second hour? Well, all right. Let's call it. Right. It's hot today, and we're. I don't know why we're indoors because it was too hot outdoors. Actually, I was gonna I'm gonna move to the outdoor set today, but uh, maybe next week if it cools off a little. Uh, anyway. Uh, and, and next week, I'll have a lot to talk about because you got the uh, West End tours. We'll have the. Weekend. Well, uh, by the way, I will be signing books. Uh, if you see this in time at the, uh, at the Century Club tomorrow, until I run out, I don't have it, all that many. And between. Uh, between me and the book on, we probably only got 10 copies left, so uh, come early. 
Uh, we'll be talking about the referendum that takes place on Tuesday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably talk about the bridge some more. I don't know. I don't know why. It's too late to do anything about it now. Because you have to spend and the, the opening, money on it. And the opening of the, the, yeah. the Mohawks. Yeah. And the Mohawks. The Mohawks will be opening on next yeah. Thursday, right? Yes. Uh, the, the first home yep. game. Yep. Yeah. Okay. First, first non league, uh, first non home game is Wednesday, and then yeah. Thursday night they got the. Anybody Wednesday. know where they're playing Wednesday? I don't. All right. Well, we'll wait till Thursday and give them that. Uh, do, you, do you see they got new uh, uh, new seats in the grandstands? New reserve seats. No, in the I grandstand? haven't seen that. No. Yeah. yeah. There was a picture somewhere the other day I saw. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, nice seats. You know, real back seats. Uh, in the, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. I don't have to bring my little yeah. chair. Well, that like means you have to pay an extra buck for that, though. Because now they're reserve seats. A whole extra. Whole, whole it's extra. worth it. It's the best me. bargain whole in the city. Dollar. You better believe it's it. It's the best bargain in the you better city. Better believe it. You know. Better believe it. Uh, and uh, well, as long as we're going to cut this show short, uh, uh, boy, those Red Sox looked good last night. Holy. <laughs> and the Yankees did. They the Yankees tonight. Yeah, they play the Yankees uh, this weekend. Yeah. Uh, tonight. Uh, tonight's first uh, game. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby Ellsbury stole five bases last night, and he would have stolen six, uh, but for the fact that they overthrew uh, the uh, second base when he stole right. second, and, and they went out to the third, third, third for free. Yeah, uh, but he he, would, he was just stealing at will. He is so fast. Uh, I mean, a single for him is a double, yep. uh, and, and he's healthy this year, which yeah, he hasn't been man. for a couple of years. Uh, and they've been. Uh, you know they they won a couple of games with uh, uh, with reserve pitchers uh, this week, which which really was encouraging. Uh, uh, last night it was uh, Franklin Morales and uh, Aceves pitched a couple of days earlier and uh, and won. Uh, and those are the guys you you're not expecting to be in your starting yeah. lineup. And what? Yeah, you get a chance, you got to play well. Yeah. Give yourself a chance to come back again. And uh, Big Poppy was playing first base last night. He's still, yeah. he's still batting 4,000. Hmm? He's still batting 4,000. He is, he's batting 360-something. Three, three oh, and speaking he's of batting his weight. Jose Iglesias, who's always been called the shortstop of the future, yeah. is, but has not been brought up to the big team because uh, because the, 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 the take on him is, is, is his batting is lousy. He's a great fielder. But, uh, okay. Now, this is in crazy. He starts the season with the Sox, and then when, er when Drew comes back from his concussion, he goes back down to Pawtucket. With the then he comes back with the Sox, okay? He's batting, his, uh, his major league batting average this year is something like 436, right? His minor league batting average is 202. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he can't hit minor league pitching, but he's got no trouble with the major league pitching. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but the kid is playing great, and what a fielder. There was some one razzle-dazzle defensive play after another last night. Of course, Pedroia is a miracle on uh, uh, two feet. Yeah. I, I realize this probably sacrilegious, but did you watch any of the Yankee game? I did not, no, no. You know what I saw in the Yankee game? Empty, empty seats. For uh, a Subway series, they yeah. were empty all over the place. If the right. place wasn't half full. They lost four terrible. games in a row. It doesn't matter. Did they play both stadiums in the yeah, last Yeah, they did. The first two like, yeah, yeah, Boston two and Philadelphia did the same thing. But yeah. it just, nobody's at the games. It's terrible. That, People that's, can't afford to go. Well, that's part of it, and they don't care. Uh, they don't care, but yeah, can't afford it. Well, you know, the supply and demand should take over at that point. But will it? Will they figure out? We got to give these seats away. Well, they're well, back, you know, they're back door and the, the seats well, they're selling them on SubHub. And well, that's you know uh, because nobody's paying. Some it. of those Red Sox games last year, you know, because Fenway Park is not cheap because they had all those years of right. sold out. Well, there were games where you could get a really good seat on StubHub for five bucks because nobody could get rid of them. You know, people with the season tickets yeah. were, were uh, figured they'd make a bundle on them. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. So anyway, right. it's, uh, that's it. We're, that, that we're, we're, we probably ran over our hour, but that's okay because we're not doing a, we're not going to do a second hour today. 
And uh, next week we'll have a lot to talk about. Tuesday we're back on the uh, radio, WCSS1490.com or 1490 on your AM dial if you're here locally. Uh, at about 10.04 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, we'll be on the air uh, for about, you know, 55 minutes. And until then, I'm Bob Going with Jim Nicosia and Gavin Murdoch, and this has been the show with no name.